each other. To train enlisted personnel in nuclear, chemical, and biological reconnaissance and decontamination operations, lectures, and practical experiences in chemical and biological defense. I'm quite certain that I outrule anybody who's concerned about any level of biological defense when it comes to the pathogens being released in this country. This is one of the several books that I know that govern what is actually going on. And a lot of what you're doing is paranoid delusions from your friends that have read nothing. In my opinion, and your people just approached me and said that one of your people in your hospital have reported that five of six of your people have been infected, although they were vaccinated. Oh. That means oh. important COVID and the vaccinations. I'm going to refer to some of the actual facts we in my business deal with. As part of one of the several committees we have, uh, we have committees going back to 1932 regarding pathogen, bacteria, and the viruses that affect society. And relevant to one of the facts of this issue is that pathogens invading the body of a person weakened due to exposures in my field to chemical and radiological contaminants. Uh, there's an issue with the COVID-19 pandemic continuing to interfere with standard commerce and social activity. In a statement made in December 1932 in the Special, Special Committee on Chemical, Incendiary, and Bacterial Weapons, Someone specifically made a comment that predicted what we're doing here today. This woman said, we are not at present in a position to subject bacteriological research to effective supervision. Virulent bacteria, such as might cause epidemics, are to be found in all bacteriological laboratories, both public and private, and also in hospitals treating contagious diseases. There can be no question of hindering the progress of medical bacteriology, the objects of which are humanitarian, the preparation of serum, vaccines, etc., by supervising and restricting experiments with virulent cultures. Such supervision, moreover, would never be complete and therefore be always ineffective. And your vaccines will never be effective because military forces are not going to let you win. It's just not going to happen. But this ended long ago. The Spanish flu traveled the globe in three months, three. Nowadays, we have jet planes that travel around the world in two days. With a shelf life of seven days, you would have all been infected. You started this, this history of yours wearing gloves. Sir, you should sir have your time is up. Oh, let him finish. Oh, let him finish. Oh, let him finish. Okay. He's not done. Let him speak. Speak. You should have worn neoprene gloves. The gloves you wore did nothing. You were all infected. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Because we've said it all. We've proven time and time that masks do not work. The virus, I see some really smart people in here that I love that know that virus goes right through those masks. Come on. I see many of you who help hair. me fight against child abuse. But let me tell you, the reason why I wear this shirt is because our children are, maybe not all of them, maybe some of the kids do okay with the masks on, but some of them don't. They're getting rashes. They're coming home with headaches and puking. I went to my friend's her five-year-old granddaughter, face covered in a rash, and she's puking in headaches, couldn't even go to school because of masks. She's being deprived of oxygen through the day. There are studies that prove that the masks are hurting some of our kids. That's why the EOP was so perfect. It worked for those people who knew their kids couldn't handle it, and then the kids who you know, could, could do their thing to protect everyone. All you people here in your blue and gold to support the board, I'm not against you. I feel like we disagree on what the best thing to do is, but I'm not against you. And I bet that all of you 
Because what I heard was that it was unanimous on the EOP. And that's what we're asking for. We're asking for a line to be drawn in the sand. And I'm so sad right now because you guys aren't even going to vote on it tonight. They're supporting you. They're here to support you. But you won't even support yourselves because you won't make a public comment, a public vote to say where you all stand. So you're hiding behind your own vote. Yep. So yep. it makes me sad. I want to know where y'all stand. Our children are being hurt. We have children with special needs. Girls in our high school have been denied their education because they are not able to wear the mask. It is a medical exemption. It is allowed. And they were sent home because they wanted them to have the mask on. How is that okay? It's not even legal. Online education is not a choice, let me tell you. If you do pull your kids out of public education, please just homeschool them. Got a group started, we'll help you do it, okay? It's possible. And can I just say another thing? My son's a type 1 diabetic, so I'm extremely offended by your story about the type 1 diabetic. Yeah! He got his type 1 diabetes and almost died from diabetic ketoacidosis, and several other children got it that same year because at GAS, you guys had to hire Connie to take care of the kiddos because so many of them came down with type 1 diabetes. And that is very common that a child will just bam, have it, and almost die. Happened to my kiddo. And you know what happened to my kiddo at 21 when he got COVID? Because yeah, we got it. We had it. He was sick for three days with a fever and some body aches, and now he's fine. Yep. Yep. Yep.